Okay, um, very happy to see you guys here. I'm going to talk to you today about something that happened in the trading room, which I personally think it was of a huge importance. And I don't know if uh, you've been with me today or you haven't been with me today, but I'm going to share my screen right now and talk about trade management and just specific one trade management, which I think was very, very important. And of course, I'm talking about the spot trade. So here's the spot trade. This is uh, when we came in and I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to ask you a few questions. So I would love you to participate in that and ask any question you like. Just please use the Q mark so that I can understand that you're asking me or just ch chatting with the other fellows here. So um, try and use the Q mark and uh, let's have some um, interactive session here with any questions you like to ask. Uh, first, relating this, then whatever you guys think is appropriate. So let's take a good look at uh, spot and try and realize what happened there because I think that trade means a lot to a lot of people here. And even if you got me right and during the session today when we manage this trade, you totally think you understand it, I think we should go over it once more, explain it a little bit more in depth and uh, understand it better. And probably you have more questions and I, I do have now, of course, more time uh, to answer these questions. So let's take a quick look at uh, SPAT. As you can see, SPAT is up 3.9%. Uh, it wasn't the case when we started. Of course, the volume is always great. Almost 3 million shares. Uh, it was posted today in the room, not by me. I mean, I, I, I thought it was a good trade, so I so I, I, I edited it and, and, and it, it, it was posted by me. But originally it was posted by one of the traders in the trading room. I can't remember who. Anyway, so what we are seeing here is a stock that is gapping up. Certainly a lot of people like it. And of course it's uptrending. So there's several things here which I like when I trade, when I'm looking for potential long trades. And let's go through them one by one. Or in fact, let me ask you, what do you think should be the things that would make me interested in spot? What do you think should be what I'm looking at? I just mentioned some, but let's, uh, the daily chart. Okay, good point. Let's go back to the daily chart. Do you like that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Look at that. That's the breakout day of spot. So when you go to the to the daily chart, and of course, spot was recently IPO'd. We're looking back uh, just a few months here. It was uh, at the beginning of May, as you can see here. It was just IPO'd. Initially, it came down, then it's moving up, and then it came to some resistance, pulled back down, moved up. That is the breakout day. We are here at the breakout day. So that's a great opportunity to go long spot today. Now. Why does breakout days matter? Well, first of all, it's a technical breakout and th that's because it's moving to a new high over the resistance. And that also means that a lot of people are watching it. So SPAT basically is a stock that everybody watches because it's, it's a big company. People love, to, uh, people love to trade it, people love to watch it. And when SPAT has a nice technical opportunity, then that means a lot of people will watch it and probably is going out. Oh, probably going to trade it. So when you see good technical opportunity on the daily, that means that a lot of other people are trading it. When I say other people, I'm not talking about day traders now. I'm talking about core investors. I'm talking about people who would buy it for the long run, people who think that it's going to go to $1,000, whatever. I don't care who, but there will be a lot of people, not only traders, who would love to buy spot because it's moving to a new high, nice technical breakout, and so on. And again, we love technical analysis. It's usually a self-fulfilling prophecy. So once you see stock moving into a new high, that means a lot of people are going to buy it. So yes, first point was uh, certainly looking at the daily. So yes, absolutely. That's one of your answer. Um, second point is the volume. Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned, 3 million shares. That also means what? It means lower spread, spreads. It means... Um, you can move in and out whenever you like. Of course, when a stock is trading close to $200, that doesn't mean 
a one cent spread, but a 10 or 20 cent spread on a, spot, on a stock like that, that would be acceptable. Okay, that would be acceptable. So high volume, relatively high volume. That's correct. Uh, the daily chart, as we uh, mentioned, uh, the daily formation, we talked about the daily chart and the daily formation, and now comes the intraday formation. That looks like a nice bull flag. I mean, not really. It's moving up to a new high, found some resistance holding near the highs. What does it mean? It means that buyers are quite aggressive. Whenever the stock is coming down, they're buying, coming down, they're buying, coming down, they're buying. Now I'm looking at uh, possibly a new high. I'm taking a look at the high of this candle. That's uh, 184.95, 184.95, and I'm thinking, okay, I could go long here. It consolidates near the highs. That's a nice resistance. Once it goes through this resistance, well, that's a nice technical breakout formation. So again, uh, stock is looking great technically on the daily, on the intraday looks fine. Nice technical formation, and yep. Uh, so it looks good. I'm looking for some other uh, answers you gave here. So breakout, yes, we just talked about that. No resistance ahead. Correct too. Very good point, Henderson. Um, I failed to mention that. When you guys see the daily like that, there's no, you, you can't go back. This stock was recently IPO'd, and that means a vacuum. That means that once it moves over the recent highs, it moves to uncharted territory. It moves into a vacuum where it has never been before. And that means that there aren't any disappointed buyers. Disappointed buyers are usually selling when the stock is reaching their price. For example, just assume. Just assume you bought here, okay? During the time when spot went up. And then it kept down and it came down, tried to move up, came down again, tried to move out. Whenever it's moving up, there's always a disappointed buyer who will sell. So you see, when the stock is trying to move higher, it usually finds a lot of resistance. The resistance comes from previous disappointed buyers. So these guys who bought it here and at, I don't know, 167, and then it came down to 149, that's a 10, 20 points down, almost 20 points down, uh, more than 10%. So these guys are seriously disappointed. If the stock comes back up again, the, the place they will sell is the place where they bought. So people don't usually like to sell when they're losing. Sometimes they don't have a choice. But when a stock comes back to their entry price, they would usually say like, oh my God, I'm always losing so much money in the stock market. It finally came back. I don't have a loser here. I'm moving out. So they're they'll move out. Now, when the stock is moving to a new high, no resistance, moving into a vacuum. Good point. I failed to mention that. Uh, volume, yeah, again, we talked about that. Um, mm -mm -mm, okay. Uh, we're looking at the stock. Uh, I don't think you mentioned the stock is uptrending, right? But it is uptrending, so it's not just a nice breakout technical formation. It's also a very nice uptrend, a very nice uptrend. Um, now, assuming I want to go long, and the highs is 184.95, 184.95. My question, my question to you is, hold on a second, what should be... I'm going to have a poll soon, so hold on. What should be my entry price? What should be my entry price? And I'm giving you a few options here. So please choose the price you think is right. So uh, again, the highs is 184.95. That's why I put in 184.96 because it's a cent over the highs. And then comes 185.01 for some reason. And then comes 184.90. Maybe I want to predict the breakout. Maybe I want to predict the breakout and buy it before. You know, I like to predicting breakout. So maybe it's 184.90. And uh, I'm not pushing you into clicking that button. <laughs> Actually, I am. <laughs> but if, if you took that bait, I'm not sure you're right. <laughs> and uh, 185.10, which is uh, over the highs. Okay, so... 
the vast majority, which is which are probably people who have been with me in the trading room, wrote down uh, 185.01. Well, let me go through what I believe is the right uh, answer. Well, you know, I like to predict my breakouts. So when I see a stock moving up to the highs and I'm thinking if I should buy it somewhere, well, I like to buy it before it moves to a new high. I like to predict a new breakout and buy it before it breaks to a new high. I like to do that. But in this case, can I do that? Absolutely not. Because you see, it came up here to 89. That's six cents below that. Then it came up here to 91. Then it came up here to 94. So you see, the stock is kind of flirting with the highs and just two cents below or one cent below and then pulls back another 20 cents or 30 cents. So the stock is really coming to a very clear resistance line and I can't buy it a few cents before the highs like I usually love to and predict a new high because there's nothing to predict here. It's coming to the highs and it's bouncing. So I need to buy it over the highs, absolutely. So one option here could be a cent over the highs, which is a cent over this number, 184.95. Of course, you can see the numbers here as I click the button, as I click the candle. So one option is to buy the cent over the highs here. And that would be the wrong answer. Why? Because we've got a whole number in front of us. We want to buy it over the whole number. 185 is a whole number. That means a lot of sellers. Usually you would find a lot of sellers at whole numbers. That usually means a pullback. So when you're watching a stock getting close to a whole number, that is usually a pull. That usually means a pullback. And when when a stock is getting very close to a whole number, oh, just hold on a second. I want to check something. When stock is getting close to a whole number, it would usually uh, pull back down. So just a second here, please. Yeah, okay, got it. So um, I'm, I, I would, and, and since the price is very, very close, just a few cents away, and since uh, uh, Spot is quite a big mover, I should wait for 185.01. So in my opinion, the right answer is like most of you, 63% of you mentioned uh, 185.01. I was talking about predicting, and that was the wrong answer before uh, because it, it, you know, it tried to move to the highs several times and, and failed. So when you see something like that, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to buy before it moves to a high. So even though I like predicting, I, in this case, I couldn't. I just couldn't. Now I do have some questions here. What price is what again? I think I probably answered that. Um, the present of the round number wouldn't be problematic. Yes, that's why I want to buy it over the round number. That's exactly what I just mentioned. Um, but why would be sellers at the whole numbers for a stock that's making all time high? Well, Mohammed, it has nothing to do with the previous uh, sellers, with the previous uh, buyers. It has nothing to do with that. You know, just assume you bought it. Let's go back to the daily. It has nothing to do with previous buyers who are now sellers. Let's just assume you bought it at 170. Look at this nice reversal point here. And you're thinking, and you know what? You're not a trader now, okay? Think, get into the head of the investors or whatever. And you're thinking, okay, I'm buying it for 170. I'm looking for a 10% profit, approximately 10% profit. And, um, well, what would be my target? Uh, well, I bought it somewhere around here. I'm looking for 10%, around 10%. I think I will sell at 190. Now, do you think investors or people who are just thinking about selling a stock are thinking something like, well, I bought it at X price, I don't know, well, and I will sell it at 189.86? Nah, they're talking in whole numbers. The reason you see a lot of sellers in whole numbers is because once they see a whole number, also when they watch the intraday, they see a whole number, they would say, well, let's see, oh, I'll sell it at 184, at 185, at 190, whatever. So you see, the thing is 
they are always thinking in whole numbers. People are thinking in whole numbers. If you weren't here in this trading room, if you never met me and you and, and, and we, I just meet you on the street and I say, you bought a stock at 172, where would you sell it? Well, I think if it comes to 190, I'll say it. Something like that. You would never give me an answer 184.35. Something like that. Never. So people are thinking in whole numbers. Where would my stop be? That was about to be my second question. So yeah, that's my next question. Where would my stop be? And yeah, I do have a poll for that too. So let's go to this to the poll, assuming I would find this question which I previously made. Where would be my stop loss? You see guys, I'm preparing my lessons. Where would be my stop loss? I gave you a few options here. 184.59. Well, the lows here. Okay, this recent low here. Let me give you some some points before or <laughs> for some of you after. Uh, I'll give you some points. The lows here is 184.60. Okay, that's why you have an answer which is 184.59. Okay, so that's like a, a cent below the recent support level here that we'll see then i gave you another option which is 184.30 which is around here then i gave you another option which is 183.99 183.99 now i wouldn't choose 180 which is also quite uh, you see the support level here um, interesting not very clear support but that would be an interesting point again because that would be a whole number and when we try to buy over whole numbers, we also try to sell below whole numbers. Why? Because if stock comes down, it will find some buyers at whole numbers. Why do people buy at whole numbers? Because if I would ask an investor if he likes to buy it at 185, he will say, well, it's a bit too expensive to But you know what? If it comes down to 184, I'll buy. So he may have an open order to buy at 184. Is that the wise thing to do? Absolutely wrong. He should buy sent over. If he likes to buy, he should buy at 184.01. Why? Because he'll have a lot of competition at 184. But if you want to sell or if you're going to get support, you should probably sell a cent under because you may get some support at 184 because people are buying at 184 something and then you'll have some support. So uh, most of you guys believe that it's 59. So just a cent below here. Well, um, Kind of true, if we're lucky. And I thought I would be lucky, and I think I thought when I traded that stock that that should be my stop-loss point. But it turned out, as you may remember from this trade, that I was wrong. It turned out that I was wrong. I thought that price should be here too. I thought so too. I thought that if it's going to come down, then it's most likely to be supported here. So I thought that should be the price. But realistically speaking, and I have to say, I didn't really come to this conclusion when I was trading it, only when I was looking back at that trade. Okay. Realistically speaking, I was wrong thinking that should be my stop. My stop should have been lower than that. And... I want you to take a look at uh, the way this stock behaves and you need to realize something that I realized a little bit later than I should have had. Okay? Look at previous price action. You see, stock started here today, came down, moved up, came down again and continued to the point where I wanted to buy it. Okay? Now, look at this recent pullback here. This recent pullback was from 184.70, I'm talking about this point here, to that point there, which is 183.80. That's a 90 cent, almost one point, one 90 cent pullback. So that is how SPAT behaves today. Every day could be different, but a stock usually has its own personality. We talked about some some other personalities today, like we talked about Microsoft's personality today. We mentioned uh, some other companies, like somebody mentioned in the room, a nice-looking trade in Cisco today. And uh, I, I think I mentioned that, well, 
Uh, Cisco may have a nice technical formation, but the wrong personality too. So the personality of uh, Spot is something like 90 cents today. So let's assume it moves to a new high and fails. What would be the personality? Well, uh, 185, and then it should be around here, 184.10. That should be around that level. That should be around that level. And if that's the personality of Spot, if that's the personality of Spot, then I should probably have a little bit more um, to plan. I mean, a, a, a bigger stop loss to plan. Whatever. Um, that may have been a mistake. I'm looking at it right now. But let's 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 talk a little bit about uh, what happened, because what came later was very interesting. What came later is this. I'm slowly pushing. You see, it did come over 185. And the fact that it came just a cent over 185. Just a cent over 185. And that was a failure. I was hoping to see a breakout formation over here. And I was hoping to see spot takes up to the sky and gives me a quick 50 cent partial, which I did not get. Immediately after this move over the whole number, it pulled back. Now, was it wrong to buy it? No, it wasn't. That was the right technical formation. There was nothing wrong about it. Everything we mentioned here, the daily, the interday formation, the nice technical, I was proven wrong. It came down, but that's because stock has their own life, and you never know what to expect. We never have a 100% guarantee that we're going to make a profit. So some behave the way we like them, some don't. But those who don't, we need to know how to manage them. We need to know how to manage them. Now, it does not matter if your stop loss was here, just below the recent support, or your stop loss was below. Now I'm going to talk to you about what you should do when you see a quick downside moving red candle like that. And sadly, it doesn't stop there. It continued. Hold on, I want to stop here. <laughs> It continued. So there comes a second one, and it's these are one minute candles. And as you can see, it started here, it continued. So it doesn't matter where your stop was. If your stop was here, which assuming that was the right place to stop it, I'm not sure. Assuming that was the right place to stop it, it does not matter where your stop loss is. Even if your stop loss was here, when you see a quick downside moving stock, you always, always, always wait for a pullback. Now, um, th this is not the lesson where I should teach you that. This is not the lesson where I should teach you that. I did talk about that. We talked several times about the fact that you shouldn't move out on a quick moving candles. You always wait for a pullback. How many times did I mention that in the trading room? Plenty of times. Uh, how many people survive these uh, pullbacks? Um, I hope a lot. Uh, because we keep on talking about them in the trading room. But right now, I want to talk about this, but that is not the topic of my lesson. So you all know, we never ever move out of a stock that is coming down, and it doesn't matter if your stop loss was here. That's one of the reasons why you shouldn't always have a hard stop in the system. Sometimes you should, but most of the time I don't use a hard stop. So even if I do, I would cancel it here, wait for it to come down, and as I always mention, is there's like a 99% chance you're going to get a pullback at a decent stop loss and it's going to continue higher. So I got to wait for a pullback. I never move out on quick candles because these quick downside candles are supposed to take you out of the games. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Take you out of the game. That is your shakeout. You're not supposed to be leaving. But again, that's not the topic of my lesson. Now, I was waiting for a pullback. The pullback did come. There's the pullback. Finally, it came. It came at 184.16, I believe. Something like that. So it finally came, and I was still holding for my original quantity. At that point, and again, I'm not trying to talk about the fact that you shouldn't move out of a quick-moving stock. I'm just talking about the fact that you're seeing the stock moving up right now. I want to talk to you a little bit more about trade management. Hold on a second, because I'm going to keep on showing you what happened next. So you see, 
that would happen next. And the stock continued, and the stock continued, and the stock continued, and the stock continued, and the stock continued. And now it's slightly coming back down, which I don't really like. And as you can see, I am still riding it. I still have 100 shares left. A few minutes ago, I was up four points. Now I'm up only two and a half points. But still, it's still okay. I want to have a stop right over here, so I'll be watching it in the next few minutes. If it comes under this support level here, I'm going to stop it. But as you can see, that was the point I was talking about earlier. Guys, here it is. Look. Here it is. Look back and see where we are now or where it moved to. And look at the point where which I mentioned, which we were discussing. We were discussing this point over here. So, and, and by the way, this pizza thing is doing great too, if you're following it. Uh, I'm still holding 100 shares. And I'm, I'm probably going to sell it uh, a few minutes before trading day is over. And I have to say, I don't really like to see what it's doing now. So excuse me for a second here. I'm just going to use a stop under 184 here. I just want to make sure I have a stop, a cent under, sorry, 187. A cent under Y, again, it's a whole number. And I want to have a stop. That, so I need to cancel my previous stop because I do have a previous stop. 187, checking the numbers again. 187, always check them and recheck them. Stop orders, 100 shares. That's my P position. I want to click stop now. And I do have a stop order in the system right here. So uh, with the pizza stop too. So excuse me for that. I'm just hoping it's going to bounce again from here. But I want to go back and show you that point which we discussed. When we looked at that, that looks like, a, like, like oh my God, what a big pullback. Like, oh my God, what a big, big pullback. Now, what should we do? Should we hold on to this? Yes, you should, because you never move out on a quick candle. And then it came up. Now, when you look, when you look back, you just zoom back. You just move back from, from, from your seat and just look at the whole, whole picture of spot. I always want you to ask yourself something that I ask myself when I'm looking at the big picture. When it came down, did it do anything wrong? Did it do anything wrong? Regardless of the size you had in spot. I'm going back here. And now remember, spot, when it moved up here, pulled back 90 cents. When it moved to 185, it pulled back almost 90 cents. That's 85 cents. Did Spot did do anything wrong? Is it uptrending? Yes, absolutely it is. It is uptrending. When you look at the, this pullback, regardless where your stop was, if it was here or it was there, or regardless where it was, first, you don't move out until it cools down and you see a green candle. That's your pullback. Now you know that it's not just one fat finger selling stocks and trying to take you out of the game. So now it's pulling back up and hopefully returning and continues to move higher. But when you look at the big picture, did Spot did anything wrong? No, the stock is uptrending. The personality is a 90 cent pullback. There's nothing wrong about Spot did. The only wrong thing that may be in this trade is your quantity. That's a topic of my lesson. That's what I want you to concentrate on. I want you to take a good look at the stock, at the way, the technical behavior of the stock, and ask yourself always, did it do anything wrong? Did it deserve that I'm going to click that button? Should I click the button and move out? Or should I stay? Your decision should not be made according to the number of stocks that you're holding. I don't care what the number of stocks you're holding. If you had 1,000 shares, you would have had a problem holding it. If you had 50 shares or 100 shares, would you hold for a 90 cent pullback, 85 cent pullback? Probably yes. So it has nothing to do with the number of shares you're holding. 
it's just looking at the stock, it's uptrending, you never move out on a pullback, and again, that's not the topic of our lesson, you wait for the pullback, pullback came where it should, because that's the personality of the stocks that you're trading, and you look back at what it did, and it did not misbehave, it behaved nicely, there was nothing wrong about what Spot did, it behaved okay, it trended higher, there was no reason for you to leave the stock, unless, and that's the only issue, you didn't have the right size. So everybody should trade the right size, the size that suits you, but once you're in, I don't care what is your size, you may have made a mistake because you thought your stock should be a little bit smaller, I don't care. You always need to stick to the plan, and the plan is trending, trading with the trend, and looking back at the picture, you should always, again, ask yourself, did the stock do anything wrong? Now, looking at the trend here, I could find several locations where... Oh, sorry, I've got my alarm bell. And you know what this alarm bell means? It uh, rings every day. I don't know if you heard that. But it rings every day, and it reminds me to reconsider my trades, meaning if I should take them for tomorrow or I should move out. Now, I have to say this. I don't really like what Spot has done in the past uh, few minutes. And again, that always rings 10, 10 minutes before, the, before uh, the market's over. So I'm going to cancel my orders in pizza and in store and in spot and I'm going to just uh, close my trades in uh, pit in stop in spot sorry uh, I'm selling right now just sold zero shares um, I don't really like the fact that pizza is not near the highs and doesn't look like it's going to continue tomorrow so I'm selling here too I'm out and that's always a reminder I'm getting 10 minutes before the day is through, and I suggest you should do the same. Uh, have a reminder if you're holding stocks until the end of the day, and come back and think about if you want to swing trade them, or you want to uh, move out. And never do that on the last minute, because you could always make a lot of mistakes during the last minute. So I, I, if I look back at what Spot did, even this pullback here is nothing wrong because the stock, in my opinion, is still uptrending and uptrending nicely and nicely and nicely. The only place I can find that is wrong is here. Once it moved under this support area, you see that support area over here? That's the wrong place. And then it came down under, it retested this support area, and now it's trying to come back down, and it looks like an unpleasant bear flag. It did great, I'm not complaining, but it stopped behaving, it's misbehaving now. Look, it's breaking the bear flag right now. So that's the point where, in my opinion, I should be out. So again, anyway, if I look back at the stock, the way it behaved, I want you to look at the big picture. You shouldn't move out because the stock is uptrending and it hasn't done anything wrong. So always, when you're trading a stock, always, when you're trading a stock, you should always look at the way it behaves and ask yourself, did it do anything wrong? If it didn't do anything wrong, stick to it. Now let's see your questions, because I probably have a lot, because sometimes I stopped answering them. Uh, so your position size be different between with a stop at yes um, yes Danny uh, your position size should matter uh, depending on where you thought your stop should be so I planned my position which was mistake which was a mistake according to that stop level over here and it was a very unpleasant thing to see spot coming down but I knew I had to hold on for tourism one I made a mistake, it 
the behavior of the stock is not as I anticipated. It's 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 personality means it could easily pull back 90 cents, and it did. And the second thing, it came down too fast. You never move out. So yes, your quantity should be based on a stop which is here, which was supposed to be like 50 cent stop. Certainly not an 85 cent stop. Um, Hamad ask a question. Why not keep smaller stop loss? If a big pullback happens, then decide if you want to re-enter. Not sure I understand that. Why not keep a smaller stop loss? So if a big, big pullback happens, decide if you want to re-enter. Not sure I understand the question, Mohammed. You know, the stop loss has nothing to do with what you want to keep. The stop loss has to do with the way the formation of the resistance support and, of course, the previous behavior of the stock, its personalities I mentioned. Uh, its trend and so on. So it, it has nothing to do with you. You can't determine where the stop should be. The stock tells you where the stop should be. And sometimes an intraday behavior tells you where the stop should be and that is when a stock is coming down, for example, big time. What about to get stopped out of um, 59 and re-enter at uh, 85.0? Okay, good point, Henry. So Henry says this. Well, let's stop it here. Let's stop it here. And then we could re-enter here. Well, no. And the reason for that is clear. If I had some kind of um, pause, for example, if I had a small green candle here at where was my planned stop loss, I could easily do what you're suggesting. I would move out, I, I would see a small clear pullback, and then I would put my stop exactly where I planned, and I would be out. But then when it comes down, I wouldn't trust it anymore, so certainly wouldn't stay there. But since I didn't get that, and that was a quick downside move in two one-minute candles, then I didn't have a choice. I, should, I, 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 I had to continue. Now, when it comes down quickly, you never know where it's going to stop. It could stop like two cents below and pop up 30 cents. So it will take you out here. And immediately after, very quickly, move out 20 cents. Would you buy when it's up 20 or 30 cents? For example, takes you out at 50, pops up real quick to 80. Now you go long, so you moved out here. Now it pops up 20 or 30 cents. Would you go long now? You never know exactly where to move out and then click in when it moves up like 5 cents. There wasn't a clue where it's going to stop. I would hope it would stop somewhere around here. And then I would have a good stop loss, but it didn't. It decided to move all the way down here. Now look at previous action. Uh, it, it, it was right. That's its personality. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did happen. So no, it's not a good idea. And when it came down too much, you're not supposed to be buying it again. Again, if I would have thought about this personality, which I didn't at the time when I traded it, then I possibly could have do that, but no. Um, I'm only reading your Q mark questions, so if you have any questions that I'm going to miss, it's because you didn't use the Q, so it's okay to chat. I just don't know if it's a chat or a question. Uh, what if you use five minute chart? Um, uh, is that the same with one minute candle? You know, you, you you can do and you can see the same thing if you watch a, a five minute candle. During the first 30 minutes, I usually prefer to use a one minute candle, but uh, you can definitely make the same decision using five. It's it would be approximately the same, but that that is just experience or the way you like it. It shouldn't matter. Uh, do we look at the volume of the spike? Yes, we always look at the uh, volume of spikes. Uh, the, uh, but but here I don't have a clue. You see that spike here, if if that's the one you're talking about, that spike here. That was, um, uh, it didn't come down with a lot of volume, which is good news because when its stock is coming down with a lot of, with a lot of volume, it usually means, um, I don't know, sellers are taking over, but it didn't come out with a lot of volume, which is quite good news, quite good news. But, but yes, we always look. I, I didn't talk about that because there was nothing to see there. I mean, it wasn't a spike of volume too. 
uh, but with strict uh, risk management, are you supposed to sell the position on the, the position in the pullback after the drop? No, I'm not. As there, there is never such a thing, Jan. There is never such a thing of a strict uh, risk management. There's never such a thing as a strict. I mean, there is. I mean, risk management is 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 is, is not only about. It, it's about planning, right? So. I'm not talking about a risk, a strict risk management. I'm actually talking about a, ri a strict stop loss. I never use a hard stop. Why don't I use a hard, uh, a hard stop? Because if I use a hard stop, I would, I would always have to use a strict hard stop. So I'm using what we call a mental stop. But a mental stop is depending on a lot of things. Like I want to see a small pullback before I move out. I don't want to move out just because it reached my stop. So if that was your intention, no, it shouldn't be strict. Strict risk policy is okay, like how much you should lose per trade or per day or per something. But even losing per day, when, we, when we're learning, when, when we're having... Here's the bell, market's closed today, closed now. So when we're talking about how much you can lose per trade, for example, the how much you can lose per trade... Uh, if you're doing, if you went through the Star Trader course with me, I will, I will usually say it's anywhere between one percent to two percent of your account value. So if if you if if you have ten thousand dollars in your account, you can't lose more than one hundred to two hundred dollars. Why is it between one hundred and two hundred? The two hundred is double as much as one hundred. Why would it be anywhere between one hundred and two hundred? Well, the reason for that is because. You're never sure about where your stop loss is going to be. You can't have a $100 exact stop loss, and that's it. Sometimes it goes beyond that. Sometimes it goes as much as double that. That was a good example here. It doesn't matter if it was because of a mistake I made or whatever. But you need to have strict rules, but they should be not be handled strictly. It should be handled strictly in between 1% to 2%. That should be your strict rule, but not 1.1% or something like that. I hope I made myself clear. Um, Vitaly asks, uh, how big should be pullback to get out of this case? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry for that answer, Vitaly. I'm going to just tell you strictly. Um, pull back. Before you see a green candle, you don't move out. That's it. How far can it come? Here, here, here. Is it logical that it will do that? No. If you have some kind of an intraday news, it may drop down dramatically and at some point you may have no choice. But usually it will stop at a reasonable point and come up. What is a reasonable point? I don't know. It depends on the personality of the stock, a little bit luck, what the market's doing, a lot of other things. You don't move out before you see a pullback. That's it. A small pullback. It could be a small, in this red candle, it could be a small, um, a small bottoming tail. It doesn't have to be a green candle, okay? If I had a small bottoming tail in this candle, I could move out. Do you see a small bottoming tail in this candle? No, you don't. That means I didn't have any pullback here. It just continued for two minutes and then came the, the green candle. Whatever kind of pullback, even for a few seconds, I just want to see the sellers resting. I just want to see, you know, when stock is coming down this way, I just want to, see, I, I, I want, I'm watching it coming down and I'm saying to myself, would it I, I'm watching the momentum and I'm thinking, is this momentum going to stop pause for a few seconds? I don't know, 10, 20 seconds. I just want the momentum to pause a little bit. And, and, and then when I see it pausing, maybe coming up just slowly, and even in the same candle, continue to come down, this could be a reversal. In the same candle, this could be a pause, a small pause. A small pause could be a bottoming tail. And then if it comes down again, well... That was a very small reversal, but it was a reversal. I just want to see the sellers posing a little bit. And then if they decide to come back again and continue selling, I would move out even if I don't have a green candle. But I need to see some kind of a bottoming tail or something. I want to see a small pullback. I, I, 
don't look at the technical green candles or whatever you're looking at. Look at the stock moving down. Look at the sellers coming in. Look at them pausing a little bit. Yeah, okay, they're pausing now. Now the buyers are coming a little bit. Okay, the buyers are trying to move out. Just a few seconds. Okay, it held for 10, 20 seconds. Good. Now the sellers are coming back in. I'm out. That's the way I want you to think. I just I don't want you to think in green candles. It's very clear here, but sometimes it's not as clear as that. And I don't want you to just to think in green candles. Uh, Mark asks questions when you enter a trade. Do you use a limit order or market? If limit, ensure entry point doesn't mean. Um, Mark, I'm, I'm trading CFDs and I have unlimited liquidity. Uh, so I usually use market orders. Uh, but if I would use stocks, and I did trade stocks until a few years ago, if I would use stocks, I would usually use limit orders because liquidity is uh, limited and then you may find yourself buying at a very high price. Sometimes over whole numbers, I would use, even if I'm trading uh, uh, CFDs, I would, use, I would use limit orders too. Uh, Joseph has a question, spot block uh, through our stop loss and I understand we shouldn't get out of spike down. When being situation when we are past our stop, how do we act then? You just wait for a pullback. Considering not all stocks will bounce back and trend higher. No, not all stocks, Joseph, will trend higher. Correct. But you certainly expect them to bounce. They will bounce. They will bounce. I haven't seen a stock that doesn't bounce for years. They will bounce. It's just a matter of when. So it's it's it will bounce hopefully at a reasonable price and then it could come down. So nobody promises us that spot will continue coming up. Fine, it won't. But a small bounce and you're out if it comes down again. Guys, I'm 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 terribly sorry, but when you're trading stocks, it has nothing to do with you, what you want, where you think is the stop. It has to do with the market, with the stock that you're trading. You don't have a very strict stop loss you just don't have that when you're trading you should play the technical game so you know i, I was i was trading for so many years and i would be I, I would get kicked out of so many stocks that i traded just because i didn't play the right technical game maybe i had too much size then i would be forced to move out just because i couldn't hold i couldn't stand the heat how many times does that happen to you i guess a lot uh, when you survive, Julian, when you survive a spike, our target uh, keeps the same, or should we adjust uh, to keep one more ratio? Um, good point. Um, I, I could, I could, very good point, really. I, if I believe that my original stop should have been here, like 50 cent, my target should be 50 cent too. Okay, my target should be 50 cent too. Uh, may not have been the right decision today, but usually it doesn't matter if you let it come down 85 cents, your target still should be 50 cents, if that was your stop loss. You shouldn't now uh, go for uh, a one-to-one -one ratio because your stop was 85 cents and your target should be 85 cents too, in my opinion. But did I make the right decision by taking a 50 cent target? Probably not in this case. Uh, Jason, do you match? Uh, do you watch the time it says when it drops to buys? Yes, I do. Um, I, I watch everything. I watch the time it says. I watch the buyers and the sellers. So I, I didn't mention or mention all of the things I watch here. But of course, I watch the whole picture. The time it says sometimes tells me about how buyers are came, coming in, about everything. Yeah, it's CVD. That's uh, CVD route. It is, here it is. See? 
I always use the same. What is the best way to ensure you pay the list for stock that has a big spread? Um, you know, you know, Stefan, it's it's very hard to say. Um, spreads depend on the stock that you're trading. If you're trading a stock like Spot and it has a let's say 10 cent spread and your target is 50 cents, that would be kind of okay, but a little bit risky. Uh, I would say it has to do with your target. It should probably not be more than 10 to 15 percent of your target. Meaning if your target is one dollar, it should probably be not more than 15 cents. But I'm not sure that's the right rule. I have to think about it. I, I just came out with this answer. I think that's the way I behave, but I, I really have to think a little bit deeper about that because uh, you just kind of pushed me to come with an answer that um, about something that I never discussed with my traders. I should come out with the right answer. I know how to behave when I see spread, but I don't really have the right exact answer for your question right now. I, I should discuss that with myself and come out with some kind of an answer. Did I miss any of your question, traders? Uh, if I did, just uh, you know, just copy paste them uh, now. If you don't know how to use the Q mark, that's 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 okay now. I, I can read that if you if you do have another question. If you're not, then um, I've got a, I've got three dogs begging to go out right over this dog over here, over this door over here, and <laughs> next thing I'm going to do is take three dogs out. Do you know how I, I, what's the name of my favorite dog? Here, I'll show you. I think they're out. Already out. I want to show you my favorite dog. Her name is Shorty. Really, seriously. Uh, <laughs> uh, my golf handicap is uh, 12. On a good day, Jan. <laughs> yeah. No, around 12. Anywhere between 10 to 18, but more likely closer to 18. Um, on a good day, it would be like 12. Uh, can I go over? Typically manage your trade after you take your partial. Uh, yeah, not today. Sorry. We're just about down here. As new traders, how much should we follow the analyst trades? Take off. Um, okay. Uh, just a quick uh, word about that, Danny. Uh, as a new trader, you should follow the analyst. But once you go through, you should develop your own style. Um, we're trying to teach you how we were showing you our style, but you, and you should start with that because you don't have a better role model, okay, right now. But at times you should develop your own style. There's no way you're going to survive trading if you're just going to mirror us all the time. There's just no way. You need to develop your own trading style, and and that should and that will be developed in time. You you will see. You you will come to the point where you will. Stop following us to the exact thing that we're doing. Um, I don't think so. I mean, if you joined one of the programs that includes the Star Trader course, Jan, then you, you're in. You, you'll be notified. And we're going to talk about it. Yeah, you're in a student program. You don't need to sign up. You, you 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 already signed up, so you, you're going to be notified. Guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for being here with me today. And um, I, I think we just went through one more issue, which is more like the way visually the stock looks like and the way you should be treating a stock, uh, not just the, by the fact that what, by, by the, your quantity, but also regarding the way it looks, the way it pulls back, the way its personality is. Um, did it do anything wrong? I wanted to remember this. Just really, 
uh, if there's one sentence I want you to remember from this lesson is that you ask yourself, did it do anything wrong? Seriously, that's what I want you to go out with this, uh, from, with this lesson. That's, that's, that's the main thing I want you to remember from this lesson. Just to remember, did it do anything wrong? Maybe that's how I'm supposed to name this, <laughs> this lesson. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going out with dogs now. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. And it was a pleasure. And tomorrow, I'm not going to be training to you, going to the finals in Moscow. So that's uh, another interesting... Uh, I'm going to have an interesting weekend. Hope you do too. Have a great weekend. Um, enjoy. And I'll see you sometime next week. Thank you, guys. Thanks.